There was an explosion of molecular technologies in the mid 80s that have allowed us to actually test for HPV. In the early years, these were not approved tests for clinical use. You know, they were mostly done for research purposes. Um, but the awareness of the presence of an HPV infection has become much more widespread. We're doing this now routinely in some women, particularly women over the age of 30, as part of screening. Just because you have an HPV infection doesn't mean you'll ever have a cervical cancer, all right? Most people, nothing will ever happen. But we do know the association between HPV and cervical cancer is much higher than that between smoking and lung cancer. All right, we've understood this association now for, for many, many years. For secondary screening, we're testing them for HPV because it actually helps us guide them to triage them to really women that actually need more procedures or not need more procedures. With regards to the adoption of the molecular technologies and the way we do secondary screening, we have a whole menu of technologies now. We have HPV testing, we have standard cervical cytology, we have colposcopy. In developing countries, there's an adoption of a point of care test, like we already inspected just with a colposcope and we treat just based on what we see. With this large menu, not every screening algorithm is adoptable to every region in the world. Not everything is right for everything. Certainly there's large trials that are ongoing in developing areas, such as what was published in rural India in the New England Journal a couple of years ago that showed us even a single round of HPV testing really will impact the mortality from cervical cancer in rural India where very few people actually have access to physicians or providers or even healthcare providers. That being said, what happens in rural India is very different than what happens in the United States where we have kind of a PAP-based cervical cancer screening. In Scandinavia, in uh, Western European countries, it's been large molecular testing studies which start with HPV testing, so start with the more sensitive test and then reflex in the cytology. These, these have been starting to get adopted in some of these single payer systems. And that being said, I, I think that this is a changing realm as to what will work with every region, with every country. Um, but it's good that we have these weapons to prevent cervical cancer.